it's important that you understand what is going on with this story, so please excuse my digital voice for a brief moment while I explain the circumstance to you. As many of you Dark Waters has been plagued by hot pockets over the past few years. Last year one of those hot pockets contacted him by the name of Winston, and challenged Dark Waters integrity claiming that he was a liar and that all of his stories were fake. The following story is what happened to Winston, and his brother-in-law Billy when they visited a place called Baby Doll Hollow in Kentucky. This true encounter shows exactly what happens when you go full retard in pursuit of dogmen, when people who should be entertained by stories become habitual line steppers, and decide to put down their keyboards and take to the woods. Tonight Dark Quarters presents, Never Go Full Retard, Winston and Baby Doll Hollow. Water strongly advised me against doing this and I don't hold him accountable for my decisions at all and looking back on the turn of events I probably should have listened to everything this man had to say but I didn't and I take full responsibility for that and it's true I spent a significant amount of time trolling and harassing dog waters approximately about two and a half years before I was actually able to speak with him and that conversation, I would say, was a little bit more than just contentious. The first thing he said was, hey, Matthew, I can't stand you, and I don't like you. And he went on to explain to me that he and I could build a relationship, but it started with you. Over the next few phone calls, we went back and forth debating the topic of dog man. I pointed out things to him that I considered to be inconsistencies in his stories, and he revealed to me things that were being excluded out of the stories, which led to some of those inconsistencies. Now, listen, it was probably during our second or third conversation when I decided to call his bluff. I told him, look, I know how we can put it in all this speculation and his back and forth. Just give me a location where I can go find dog man. Now, pause right there in that moment. I should have known that I had up, but it didn't quite dawn on me yet because he responded by kind of giggling under his breath and saying, OK, if you want to see dog man i tell you what head on down to baby doll hollow in kentucky i guarantee you 100 percent that you're gonna find dog man and if you get there and make it back out you got to give me 100 percent ownership rights to your story listen i've watched every video listened to every podcast every interview about dog man that's out there and i've never ever heard of baby doll hollow in kentucky now again, my spidey senses should have been tingling and thinking that I was being set up, but I didn't really pay attention to it at that moment because he gives me a general area. Now, this baby doll hollow was in the area of Haley, Kentucky, between Haley and Blackie. Two super small towns in the middle of nowhere. Now at this point in time, I couldn't help but feel like I was falling into some kind of trap. He says, listen, I totally agree with you. The best way to get this whole thing resolved is for you to simply go see for yourself. I'm going to have a guy named Santos call you on your cell phone. He lives in Kentucky in the area. He can take you exactly to where Baby Doll Hollow is. We agree and then get off the phone. A few days later, I get a call from a block number. Guy's name, Santos. Heavy, heavy country accent. And the words that come out of this man's mouth are direct and simple. Dark Waters told me to call. When are you guys coming to Kentucky? Now, I readily admit I was a little hesitant to talk to this guy. So he repeats himself. James told me you wanted to see Dog Man. Only God knows why you would want to see something like that. <clears throat> All I need you to tell me to do is what weekend you want to come and I'll meet you and take you to the spot. How do I know you're not going to try and put a bullet in my head? Man, I don't know you. This dude laughs at me and says, if it makes you feel more comfortable, bring as many people as you want with you. In fact, I encourage you to bring at least three to four people with you because you're probably going to need them. He goes on to say, I'll let you think it over and call you back in a few days. Now, let me pause you in the story for a moment because I need you to understand exactly what I was going through. I really, really wanted to see Dog Man. 
So I start trying to find some kind of companion to accompany me to Kentucky. I go to my Facebook group and direct message a few people telling them, hey, Dark Waters gave me a location where there's dog man. Do you want to go? And absolutely nobody wanted to go. So I talked to my brother-in-law, Billy, and convinced him to take the ride with me from Nashville to Kentucky in order to go find these creatures. The only problem I had was that Santos hadn't called me back yet. Seven entire days passed before this man calls me back. And when he does, the conversation is short and sweet. When are you guys coming? I go and explain to him that I can be there the following weekend. His instructions, meet him on Main Street Loop in Blackie, Kentucky. We get off the phone, I pull a place up on Google Maps, and this is some straight up backwoods type. It's just a small street right next to a train track. Across the track is a few houses, and then a ridge full of trees that goes straight up into the air. Fast forward, a week passes. We're in Blackie, sitting on that main street loop, waiting for Santos. This dude pulls up. Black F-150, roll down the window and says, y'all ready? This guy steps out of the truck. He's every bit of six, seven, six, eight, long, shaggy hair, tattoos all over his body. This dude looked like he had never, ever been out of the backwoods of Kentucky. Y'all brought guns, flashlights, water. You got everything you need? Imagine I'm sitting in my truck looking at this giant, nodding my head saying, yeah, I got everything we need. And then he says, listen, I agreed to take y'all to this spot but I'm not going down in that hollow with you. And I'll give you one piece of advice. Once you get down there in that hollow, pay attention to the living and not the dead. You understand? Pay attention to what's living and not what's dead. He might as well have been speaking Japtalian to me. But by the time the sun went down, we both understood exactly what the hell he meant. 45 minutes later, we're driving up the side of this ridge following behind Santo's truck. Billy, my brother-in-law, looks at me and says, listen, this is getting a little bit too real, man. You sure we want to do this? For all we know, this dude could take us out here and shoot us in the head and nobody will ever find us, man. Listen, the further we travel into these woods, the more Billy starts to spaz out. He's sitting in the seat, eyes bucked wide open, sweating. I I'm not sure if we should do this, man. Let's turn around. Come on, man, let's turn around. I tell him I got a good feeling that we're going to be all right, that the Santos guy's not going to do us anything. He starts to scream. Wait, wait, wait. Didn't you tell me the way you found this Santos guy is through this guy, Dark Waters, who you've been with online? So you think you could just quit the dude online and then we supposed to come out here to the woods and follow somebody that we don't know into the woods looking for dog man. This is some dumb, retarded we doing right now, Winston, and you need to admit it. Billy and I are still arguing, going back and forth. When Santos turns on to this little bitty small logging road and what i mean by small is as we're driving through there the freaking rear view mirrors are bumping against tree branches and bushes and i noticed we're no longer going uphill we're starting to descend in the downward direction about five minutes later we come to the spot on the logging trail where it kind of opens up you can tell that someone had taken construction equipment and cleared out an area just enough space for two vehicles to go into and for one of them to turn around and go back in the other direction. And at this point in time is when it started to get real. Santos pulls over, gets out of his truck, machete in one hand, AK-47 pistol in the other, and starts walking in our direction. Billy is freaking the out. He's reaching in the back seat trying to get his AR-15 <clears throat> when Santos walks up to the window and starts tapping it with the machete. Y'all get out so I can tell you where you need to go. Now talk about a tense moment in time. Billy's getting out of the passenger side of my truck with his AR-15. Santos takes a few steps back, leaving space for me to open the door to my truck and get out. There was this prolonged moment of silence. Him looking at us and us looking at him. Before he says, listen, I'm not going any further than this spot. What I want you to do is take your truck and keep on driving down this logging road. You're going to get to the point where you see these two down trees. <clears throat> Once you get to those trees, you can go to the east or to the west. Doesn't matter which direction you take. It's all going to bring you to Baby Doll Hollow. And if you want to see Dog Man, all you need to do is go down there in that hollow. Then this man turns around and slowly starts walking back to his truck. His head and shoulders swaying back and forth. I could tell he was scanning the wood lines looking for something. Next thing you know, he's in his truck turning around 
and as he's coming back in our direction I noticed that he's got his AK-47 pistol pointed out of his driver's side window and I'm thinking to myself oh this man is about to kill us but he doesn't this man is literally scanning the woods on each side of his truck and you can see that he was visibly scared look a few minutes later Billy and I find ourselves alone on this logging road and he starts up again with this negative talk hey man you know it's not too late for us to get out of here, right? I really feel like we're making a big mistake. And he's pressing me. Dude, let's just get back in his truck and go home. My reply to his concern was, Billy, we already here, man. It ain't going to take us that long to go down this road, walk around, and see what we can find. Let's just go about 300 yards into the woods and see what we see, and then we're going to get the hell out of here. Now, if we don't see something within two to 300 yards, we roll it. We roll out, man. That's it. Now, pause, because this is important. Had Billy not been fussing and acting like a little girl, I would have remembered what Santos said. He said, drive your truck further along the trail until you get to the two down trees. Right? And to do the Billy's bitching and moaning, we made a huge mistake. Because we didn't drive anywhere. We started walking downhill until we got to those trees. Now, the way Santos made this scene was like there was going to be a down tree across the road, right? But no, 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 no. That's not what we found. We found two entire trees knocked over, roots exposed, laying across each other in a gigantic X across this logging road. It was almost like the construction crews knocked these trees over to make sure that nobody went any further than this point. Okay, listen, at this point in time is when all the strange and weird stuff started to happen. So we take a right turn off this logging road into the woods, moving slowly and as quietly as possible. When you hear this screeching sound coming from down in a hollow, not a scream, but a screech, a sound unlike anything that I've ever heard in my entire life. We move about another 75 to 100 yards, the whole time the ground is sloping downwards till we get to the top of this ridge and there's no way to get down there we're talking about a 25 30 foot drop straight down and looking down below us there's damn near no sunlight down in this hollow you know what it felt like it felt like i was standing on the edge looking over down into hell that's the vibe that this place started to give off billy listen Let's work our way along this ridge and see if there's a way for us to get down there. So we start moving to the left, working around, trying to find a way down into this hollow. But the further we move to the left along the edge, the steeper and deeper the drop got. Then we started hearing the noises, this rustling sound coming from directly beneath us in the hollow. And where we were, the drop was so steep, you couldn't look straight down to see what was below us. Then in the distance, it sounded like buffaloes starting to stampede in our direction. It was clear something or some things heavy moving on all fours coming in our direction. Listen, this fear starts to rise up in my bones. My body is tingling and I know that we need to get the hell out of here. Now, so now we're working our way back in the direction of the truck when you can hear the alarm going off in the distance. And the first thing that comes to mind is, damn it, Santos is back there at my truck. He's going to steal it and leave us out here in these freaking woods. So we start humping it, running through the woods, heading back to the logging trail so we can get back to the truck. And as we're moving further and further away from the edge of that ridge, now you can hear what sounds like something trying to climb up the side of that ridge. When you were kids, you ever run across the lawn and slide in the leaves? You know that sound that it makes like the weight and flesh of your body sliding along the leaves that's what we were hearing like something was trying to climb up the side of that ridge when we get to the clearing by the trees i realize we still have to sprint uphill to get to my truck so now picture this billy and i are running as fast as we can uphill to get to this truck and to be clear with you i'm 52 years old and there's no way in hell anyone could have told me that I would have the ability to sprint straight uphill and get to this truck. But fear allows you to do a whole lot. 
picture this. We're about 15 feet away from the truck, and you can smell the scent of urine. The strong scent of urine. Looking at the hood of my vehicle, it looked as if someone had poured buckets of piss on the hood of my vehicle. There were these dents on the hood. And that's when I realized somehow, some way, my truck had been shifted. Looking at the back panel by the tire, it looked as if someone had slammed into my truck. It's now on an angle where the passenger side tire is damn near in the woods. Billy is freaking out. He doesn't want to get in on the passenger side, so he, so he hops in on the driver's side. I hop, I hop in, crank the vehicle up, preparing to drive off, and when we look up, you can see it. About four and a half to five feet tall, just how people have described it. Jet black fur, long ears that sit on top of his head. This thing like an overgrown Doberman pincher on steroids, standing right there in the middle of the road. Now I got the wheel cut to the left, foot on the gas, trying to get the hell out of there. When I hear Billy say, man, that thing's not big at all. We can shoot that and kill it. And the next thing you know, his rifle is out of the window and I hear him taking shots. Lord Jesus, why did he do that? No sooner than the echo of those shots rang out in my ear, you start to hear these roars coming. And I couldn't tell you what direction they were coming from because it was so many of them and it was so freaking loud. The only thing to do was focus on driving out of there. Now listen, I didn't make the most neat and accurate turn to get out of there. And the next thing you know, I was bumping in the trees, damaging the front end of my truck. But we get turned around and we're literally speeding uphill trying to get out of there. You could hear these things pacing us in the wood lines. But what took the cake was this. We we're coming up to the top side of that ridge. I'm thinking that the worst is behind us. When you see this thing jumping down out of a tree like Wolverine and the X-Men movie. You know how in the movies they show Wolverine digging his claw into the side of a tree and sliding down? That's exactly what the we saw happen at the top of that ridge. And right there is where I did massive damage to the front suspension of my truck. Picture this, we see Wolverine jumping down out of the tree, claws and all, grabbing onto the bark, and I hit the gas, we go up over the ridge, launch into the air, and bam, hit the ground, bounce two times, I, I damn near slam into a tree, and we head on out of there. We make a right, a left, another left, another right, and we're back on the highway. You know the best way to describe what's going on in my mind as we're driving away from this situation? You probably could say we were in shock, but it was a little bit more than that. You got to understand. You gotta understand. You still can smell the piss from where these things peed all over my truck. The best way to describe it is kind of like a cupcake, you know, with a layer of shock, another layer of awe, and then this icing on top of disbelief. Like we just couldn't believe what we experienced, but there was no way to deny what we experienced because you could still smell the piss all over the truck. Billy and I drive until we get to the next major highway. And I need you to understand the fear. Every road around there is a damn back road through the woods. So the entire time we're driving, Billy has the AR-15 in his clutches. My eyes are wide open. And I wasn't going to feel comfortable until I got back to some form of civilization. Now picture this, right before the sun is about to go down, I get a call from Santos. This dude is laughing on the phone like this situation is funny. Well, I guess you guys didn't make it the whole day, did you? This dude was being condescending and rude. And I want to tell him, hey, you asshole, you could have told us that those things were out there in the trees. But the truth of the matter is, I went out there looking for Dog Man. We found what we were looking for. But I, honestly, I couldn't help but feel like I was the butt of this sick, dangerous joke, man. 